My parents have always told me that no matter what happens, remember where you come from. Never forget your roots and be mindful of the struggles we've overcome to be here. They taught me to remain humble and give back to my community, to not let anything hold me back and follow my dreams. What if things go better than you ever expected? When we signed the lease, it was like, yeah, like we can sell t-shirts now. But then we walked in and we're like, <laughs> how are we gonna do this? My best friends were here. Uh, my family was here. There was a line, just some people waiting to shop. It was really just kind of coming together when kind of the world was falling apart. My dad is Tomas Olivares and my mom is Rosalba Buendia. We've been living in Eugene for 16 years. Uh, currently, my dad is a welder and my mom is a seamstress. They had me at a very young age and just, you know, there's a lot of hardships that we went through in Mexico that forced us to move here to the United States. When we first got here to this country, they had to do whatever, you know, to get put food on the table. So they were working out in the fields when we first got here and then they slowly kind of found what they were good at. My family didn't know the language. It was a whole new culture. Um, it was definitely a challenge, but we found a lot of great people that helped us along the way. And that was part of why I wanted to do something here in Eugene was because the community gave back to me. So I had to do something and bring something back here in Eugene. I joined AVID um, in middle school when I was in seventh grade uh, by my counselor, Ms. Baxter, who I still remember very vividly. I haven't talked to her in years, but I just went into her office once and she told me about this program that she was running, which was AVID. And that's honestly the first time I even knew what college was. She told me what scholarships were and that there was an, actually an option for me to go to school. Because before then, I, I never really pictured myself going to college. I was always just like, you know, I'm gonna work a job, a traditional job like my parents are, and really not try to pursue anything else. I started really trying in school more because I knew that there was you know, a reason to do it. And I knew that if I started doing well in school now and doing well in high school, I was able to get a good amount of scholarships and hopefully go to college. I decided to live in the dorms. And that was a huge step. My parents always told me, you know, whatever may happen, something goes wrong, like, you know, you always have us in this house, whatever you may need. So to me, just having that safety net, uh, that going back to kind of the risk taking aspect that allowed me to just, you know, go out and get it. You know, whatever happens, like I always have mom and dad there. That's kind of how when pieces really started coming together, I was, you know, finally independent. It was really the time where I was just, you know, it's up to you to do whatever you, you want to do. This guy named Harrison, who I had no idea who this guy was, uh, had his own account called Stanley Thrifts. And I remember I randomly messaged him one day and being able to connect with someone who, you know, could talk t-shirts for hours. That helped me just really be able to dial in and figure out what I wanted to, that I, that this, this was something I really wanted to take serious. He invited me to be part of the street fair um, that following week, seeing that I was making money while I was talking to cool people and like having a great time. That's what really hooked me on. And I remember my dad picked me up with my clothes after that day and I was like, I was like, Dad, I think I know what I wanna do. I started to really go out to the thrifts more and COVID hit. I set up a bunch of racks in my living room. I like moved my couches and I set up some racks and I started really focusing on growing my Instagram. I was doing very frequent story sales. I was really thinking about the content that I was gonna post. And yeah, I was even getting like a bunch of athletes to come through the house and they would just come and shop. That's when I really started to feel pas more passionate about it. I was like, you know, no matter what happens, I'm always gonna find a way to be able to sell clothes. I was walking down the street and I saw a for lease sign on this window. I called it and I was like, hey, like, my name is Eduardo, like how much is this place to rent? And yeah, he told me how much it was. And I was like, okay, like, sounds good. <laughs> like, I can't do that right now, but like, I'll let you know when I can. 
I called Harrison. I was like, we could really just take this on and, and open up a store next to campus. And he was like, yeah. He's like, he's like, I'm down. Let's do it. We have no fixtures. We have no hangers. We have like, I mean, we don't have any money in our bank accounts. Like we literally just had like 50 t-shirts. We were like, okay, like this is what we have to do. We made a little list down and, and we just made like achievable goals every day. You know, if you build it, they will come. It's kind of the motto that Harrison and I go towards is, you know, if, if we build something, people will come, people will start taking notice. We didn't really care what was going on. We were just like, we're just gonna focus on this. Like if, if the world ends tomorrow, like at least we were doing something that we loved and we were passionate about. grand opening day. That was really when it kind of all came together. People were getting shut down. People were, were scared to go outside, yet people were still waiting in line, like waiting to shop here. I remember I pulled up and I parked here and I was like, I was like, you guys are here for this? And that's a day I'm never gonna forget. I don't even know how to, Kind of describe these last four years. There's just been a lot of a lot of obstacles that we've been able to overcome. I'm really just trying to figure out what you know I'm gonna do with the rest of my life. I don't want to just lock myself in. I'm gonna sell vintage clothing till the day I die. <laughs> but I really just want to take the tools that I've learned, the people that I've met, and just find other ways to just you know express my creativity. Realizing that you know this world could literally end any day. To me, that's kind of been the biggest thing that I've taken away throughout these last couple of years is, is just finding something that I'm, that I'm happy about, finding something that, I, that I'm okay with investing all my time and efforts in, and finding a way to make it all kind of come together. So my passion for vintage has also allowed me to connect with other individuals, which is a big part of what I think life is.